Good day, good day, and welcome to Africa Teen Geeks. This is the STEM Digital School. This is the STEM Digital School. If you have just joined in, this is the grade 10 physical sciences. If you are in this classroom, you are here for grade 10 physical sciences. Today is the 30th of July, 2020. It's almost the end of the month, guys. I hope that everybody is feeling good and um, is slowly getting to understand what we're working with the chapter. As you know, we've started earlier on doing vectors and scalars, and we, we, we're slowly progressing to the motion in one dimension. So we're slowly learning um, how to calculate what vectors mean, what scalars mean, and uh, today we're continuing doing the vectors, uh, and that is still part of the motion in one dimension. So my name is Nonkulego Matondo. I am your teacher for Physical Sciences Grade 10. I hope that um, you are good and well to go. So whatever textbook you have, you know, guys, I, in this classroom, I usually use the Siavula or the study and master textbook. So if you have either or um, you're in a good place or if you have any other CAPS approved textbook, it's, it's, it's also good. As long as you know which section that you're doing now, you can just follow through using that textbook. Okay. So reminding you as well that in this classroom, you guys are free to ask questions. You can just send me a chat box. Um, and you can ask anything that you'd like to know uh, or, or if you're getting stuck on something that I'm explaining, you guys can just stop me and I'll go back and explain it to you guys. Okay, so do not worry. Um, this is a classroom where you guys are allowed to participate. And another thing that I have to tell you guys um, about Snaplify. Snaplify is an application that you can also get if you'd like to have some more textbooks, if you feel limited by the one that you have right now, for any other subjects other than physical sciences, you guys can go on Snapify. The textbooks are absolutely free until the 31st of um, December 2020. Because of the COVID-19 issues, they've just decided to be gracious to us and give us free textbooks. So you guys can take advantage of the situation. You can even have the application in your phone. And you can even uh, check the textbook. You can open the textbooks online and offline. So if you like to to take advantage of the situation, get yourself some Snaplify. I'm reminding you guys as well that in week six, on week six, we're actually going to be going back to revision of term three, which means that we're going to be doing some question papers for term three, um, so, so some, some question papers um, like uh, exam questions uh, and doing revision on that in the whole week of week three. That is part of the exercise that we have to do for you guys to make sure that you guys understand your work, you understand how to answer as you're going to go in detail as how you should answer the question and where you're going to be getting marks for for your problems so that is very important so this this week is week four so we're going to, to continue with our motion in right dimensions for week four week five on week six we're going back to our revision for term three okay that is to ensure that even when you go back to school and you guys start doing tests or anything you guys will be a hundred percent prepared okay so what are we going to be doing today? First of all, we're going to start with our homework. Remember, I gave you guys homework. And after that, we're going to do vectors. We're going to do properties of vectors. We're going to learn how to do addition and subtraction of vectors as well. Okay. So that is the game plan for today. So this was the exercise that I gave you guys. Uh, it was exercise 2.20. I asked you guys to go and try it at home. So uh, I think we've done this part here oh that was yesterday before the electricity um gave us problems that we couldn't continue so here it says classify the following quantities as scalars of vectors but um guys as you guys remember we've actually done a lot of problems with scalars and vectors so we know that this one is a scalar this is a vector this is a vector because it's got direction magnitude so this one is a vector as well okay so on number two it says use two different notations to write down the direction of the vector of each of the following diagram okay so use two different notations to write down the direction of the vector in each of the following diagram so there we have it there we can say um it's north right north zero degrees or you can say 360 degrees so this is the notation that you can do you guys understand i hope you guys 
understand what it means by mutation. It means that how can you identify this 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 vector if you had to uh, explain it in words? What is it? The notation it's north. You can say north. You can say it's at zero degrees, or you can say at 360 degrees. And let's look at number B. Number B, we can actually say it's 60 degrees um, north north of east, right? So you can have the 60 degrees um, because this one is uh, east of north, but it should have been north of east because this is the reference line, okay? Unless, unless in this case, this is not, not the reference line, but it is. Because uh, this is east, right? north of east, basically. Okay. And then, or oh, you can say um, uh, northeast, northeast, 30 degrees. Or you can have at, um, yeah, basically, these are the two notations that you can use for them. Okay. So this one is 30 degrees northeast or 60 degrees east of north. Okay, so let's check this this last one. So you see this last one. Um, this one is our south, and this is our. I mean, this is our west, and this is our south. So it's going to be 40 degrees south of west. Okay, so this would be 40 degrees south of west. I know, guys, this can be really tricky um, to understand, but you guys need to practice it more. Okay. For you guys to understand, or you can say 50 degrees um, west south. Okay, so this one here, it's not, it's not. Um, oh, the reason why east north, it's not east, it's not north of east. But you can also write it as um, 60 degrees north of east. But in this case, it's east north. Okay, or north east. So that's the notation that they've decided to use for these problems. Okay, if you guys still want me to explain something there. You can just send me a chat, but I hope that everybody now understands how to sort out the notation as this was the last work that we managed to do. Okay, are we good to go? So, you know, now I hope you understand now what they mean when they talk about um, uh, indicate the notation that can be used for this vector. Okay. So, now we're moving on to the order of the day. Today we are doing vectors. So the first thing that we need to know is the properties of vectors. What we should know is that vectors are mathematical objects and we will now study some mathematical properties of vectors because for now all we know is that vector is this long arrow that indicates a direction and can also have a magnitude. But there's certain mathematical properties that we need to know about vectors. So if two, sorry about that, if two vectors have the same magnitude, which is the size basically, and the same direction, then we call them equal to each other. Okay. So, for example, if we have two forces, whereby they tell us that um, force one is at 20 newtons in an upward direction, and F2 is also in 20 newton in the upward direction, then we will say that force one is equal to force two. And you see, this indicates that this is a vector, these arrows on top. So it's very important that you also write them on top of your force because they indicate that this is your vector. It's got magnitude and direction. That's why when you write your answer, you write, for example, 20 newtons upwards or 20 newtons downwards or 20 newtons east. That shows that you are working with a vector and you need to indicate your magnitude and your direction. Okay. So what are the properties of vectors? The definition um, of equality of vectors, it means that two vectors are equals if they have the same magnitude and the same direction, which is what we already spoke about, that they need to have um, both. If they are both equal, then you say um, F1 is equals to F2. So that's the equality of vectors. So just like scalars, which also have positive and negative values, vectors also have to be positive or negative. A negative vector is a vector which points in the direction opposite, opposite to the reference positive direction, okay? So if you have an arrow that's pointing up and now you've got an, uh, 
a negative, for example, if you've got positive five and negative two, you're going to have one arrow that's positive. If, if you choose, you're going to have to choose which one um, is your positive direction. So which means that one arrow, the one that's five um, Newton, will be the one that's pointing up because you've chosen upwards as positive. So which means that the one that is negative two will be the one with the arrow pointing down. So that's what it means. In this case, with vectors, as much as scalars also have positive and negative direction, but with, with vectors, you need to be able to indicate, you need to be able to choose a direction, okay? So a negative vector is a vector which points in the direction opposite to the reference positive direction. For example, if in particular situation, we have the upward direction as the reference positive direction, then the force F1, which is um, 30 Newton downwards, would be your negative vector and could also be written as negative 30 Newton. In this case, the negative sign indicates that the direction of F1 is opposite to the reference positive direction. I hope that all of this makes sense to you guys. So basically, that's what it is. So it's always up to you. It's either you, it, you can choose anyone. You can even choose your positive to be a downwards force. But in this case, um, you, they chose in this example, they chose to make it an upward force. Or if you say um, your positive, uh, you choose your reference positive to be in your right hand side, your right hand um, side. It means that your negative is going to be indicated by being on your left hand side. So the direction is always important, especially when it comes to the sign. You must always indicate on your answer that um, your F1, um, you, you choose that your positive be your upward um, direction. Okay. So that's basically how you can try and um, try and sort it out when you get to your um, different signs and your vectors. So what are the properties of vectors? So definition um, of a, what is a negative vector? A negative vector is a vector that has the opposite direction to the reference positive direction. Okay. So I hope it makes sense now that you know that it's up to you which one is a negative vector because you are the one that gets to choose which one is the positive direction. So like um, the scalars, vectors can also be added and subtracted. We will investigate how to do this next. So basically what they mean here is that um, when, when, when a person, when one person, okay, it's not different forces, right? When you move um, 50 kilometers forward and then after that you move 50, I mean 20 kilometers back, your resultant vector is going to be your, from your start point to your end point. So basically, they're going to subtract each other. You're going to have your positive 50, which is moving in the outward direction, and minus your negative, which is the one that's moving back. So which means that your resultant in this case would be your 30, um, 30 kilometers, because that's where you are in your final point. So that's what it's all about when you're adding or subtracting, or maybe when you're moving 20 meters east and then you move 20 meters um, east again, your total or your resultant movement or your resultant vector will be 40 kilometers because you're going to add these two together. Okay. So let's see how we're going to work on that. So adding and subtracting of vectors. When we're adding vectors, vectors are added. We need to take into account both their magnitude and direction. Okay. So for example, imagine the following. You and your friend are trying to move a heavy box. You stand behind it and push and push forward with the force of F1. And your friend stands in front and pull it towards them with the force of F2. So you see, these are two forces that are moving in the same direction. So the two forces are in the same direction, which is the forward direction. So the total force acting on the box will be equals to F1 plus AB both because they are both acting on the same direction. So addition and subtraction of vectors, it is very easy to understand the concept of vector addition through an activity using displacement vectors, which is an example that I just made to you guys, where I say when you walk 50 meters um, forward and then you come back uh, and then you turn back and move 30 meters uh, back that is also a subtraction of vectors because positive is forward and negative is backward 
So, displacement is the vector which describes the change in an object's position. It is a vector that points from the initial position to the final position. Like I told you guys, if you move 50 kilometers forward and then you move 30 kilometers back, your displacement in this case is going to be your start to finish. So it's going to be um, it's going to be the th the 20 uh, kilometers because you you subtracted the 30, right? It's 50 minus 30. So your now displacement is 20 kilometers. So that's that's what they mean when they talk about displacement in a vector and that you only choose your initial point to your final point. So the route that happened throughout doesn't really account for. What's most important is your start to finish. Okay. So we can represent vectors addition graphically based on the activity above. Draw the vector for the first two steps forward, followed by the vector with the next three steps forward. Okay. So there you have it. Um, this would be an example like moving two steps to the front and then you stopped, right? But after that, you moved. After that, you moved three steps forward again. So what is going to be our resultant? It's going to be two steps plus three steps. And that's going to be equal to five steps. So this will be your resultant step. Okay. So it's going to be step one plus step two. But if you had moved back three, I mean, um, if you had moved forward three steps and a uh, one step back, then it would, for example, minus one, and that will pass away. So I hope that you guys understand. If you are getting confused somewhere, just drop me a chat, and I'll explain where you guys are getting stuck. Okay. So. We add the second vector at the end of the first vector, since this is where we are now after the first vector has acted. So which means that now our, our, our new point of action is the end of the arrow, which will be, which will be right here. So the end of the arrow will be our next um, position for us to move, which is the three steps in this case, okay? So the vector from the tail of the first vector, which is the starting point, to the head of the second vector, which is the end point, is then the sum of the vectors. You can, you can convince yourself the order in which you add vectors does not matter. In an example above, if you decide to go three steps forward and then another two steps forward, then the end result will still be five steps forward. Okay. So we'll be able to yes indeed and guys please remember they could ask you to draw this in your exam at any point in time you can be asked to draw your vector remember um uh, day before yesterday when i gave you guys examples that you need to be able to draw your vectors to scale but that's why we're having this class because i'm going to show you guys how to draw your vectors that's what um this uh section of work is going to be dealing with we're going to be dealing with how to draw your vectors okay Okay, so I'm just trying to move to the next one. So don't worry, guys, you don't have to be scared. That's why we have this class. You want to learn how to draw your vectors and how to identify what kind of vector it is. That's why I was also giving you guys the exercise and the homework where you guys had to determine the notation of a vector. Because usually the notation is what they'll give you in most questions. They will say, for example, um, the person moved um, north. 30 degrees south and then you need to know how to draw a vector with that notation so the notations are also very important when it comes to vectors you need to know them because they usually ask those kind in the exam where they want to find out um, for example a person walks 30 kilometers um, uh, I mean 30 degrees north of south you need to be able to know what kind of a vector or how your vector looks like so these are things that can indeed be asked Okay, I'm just trying to get to the next slide. Um, okay, here we are. Oh, now you're moving too fast. Oh, 
Okay. So I've moved too far ahead. Okay, here we are. So now we've, we've done the adding of vectors, right? So now we come back and now we're doing subtracting a vector. So we're going to use the very same example that's similar, but in this case, that shows the subtracting of vectors. So let's go back to the problem of the heavy box that you and your friend are trying to move. So if you didn't communicate properly first, you both might think that you should pull in your own direction. So let's give an example. Before you guys had communicated properly, you both pushed the box in the same direction. So now let's say that everybody heard what they heard and they got confused. So everyone now is pulling the box in their own opposite direction. Or for example, if one wants the box to come to their side and you also want your box to come to your side. So you guys are now pulling the box in different direction. Imagine you stand behind the box and pull it towards you and force one and your friend stands in front of the box and pulls it towards themselves. So now you guys are fighting for the box, right? <laughs> because you felt um, in, in, in that person's direction is not gonna work for you. So in this case, the two forces are in opposite direction. If we define the direction, your friend is pulling as positive. So you see now, it's up to you to now choose. Is your direction positive or is your friend's direction positive? So that is always a choice that you are going to have to make when you're drawing your vectors. Okay. So if we define the direction of your friend as pulling as a positive, then the force you are exerting must be negative since it is in the opposite direction. How do we know it's an opposite? How do you show that it's an opposite direction? You see these arrows. These arrows show that it's in opposite direction. Okay. If it was in the same direction, um, the arrows would be head to tail on each other. Okay. See the same direction. Are facing each other. So which means that this is opposite direction. So we can write the total force exerted on the box as the sum of the individual forces. So which means that in this case, our force, our total force is going to be F2 plus F1. But in this case, our F1 is going to be a negative. Okay, means that our, our F total is going to be F2 minus. So as we did before, we can illustrate the vector subtraction nicely using displacement vectors, okay? So if you take five steps forward and then subtract three steps forward, you are left with only two steps forward. So which means that now it's going to be five minus three, and that's going to give you two steps, okay? So it's going to be two steps. So if, for example, they said um, maybe this one was three, and this one was five, and you said three minus five, it was gonna be minus two steps. So which means in the opposite direction, okay? So this, this minus also speaks volume because the negative is moving to your left. So if, if this answer that we got here was a negative, it would mean that it would be two steps in the opposite direction. So even if you didn't write your minus, as long as you had mentioned that, it's two steps in the opposite direction, then you still have your mark for that answer as well. Okay. Guys, this is your chance to ask. If you're getting stuck somewhere, just let me know. But we're still going to have some uh, examples. And we're slowly coming, basically in this chapter, we're slowly coming to where we have to know how to draw the vectors. Okay. So basically, that is what it's all about. It's either you're adding or you're subtracting, but it basically works like that. We always calculate your end displacement, which is from start to finish. And it doesn't account for the route that you have taken. Okay. So... Oh. So 
Now we get to the resultant vector. Now we've spoken about the subtraction and the addition. So now we come to the resultant vector. So the final quantity you get when adding or subtracting is called your resultant vector. So in other words, the individual vector can be replaced by your resultant vector. The overall effect is the same. So what is the definition of a resultant vector? The resultant vector is a single vector whose effect is the same as the individual vectors acting together. What does that mean? It means that if you're going to have your, I mean, uh, your, your, five, your five steps forward and your two steps back, your resultant vector is going to be your three steps, which is going to be um, the total of your subtraction. So the, the three steps is going to indicate or oh, it's a representation of your resultant, basically your entire movement until where you stopped, okay? So we can illustrate the concept of resultant vectors by considering our two situations in using force to move a heavy box. So we're going back to our box and it's you and your friend trying to move your box. In the first case, on the left, you and your friend are applying force in the same direction. At first, you guys were understanding and decided, let's push the force to the left or to the right, okay, in the same direction. The resultant force will be the sum of the two applied forces in that direction. In the second case, however, on the right, the forces are applied in opposite directions. So now you guys are fighting. You just felt that moving in the same direction is not working for you. So now you, you now want to move it in your own directions, both of you. So the resultant vector will again be the sum of the two applied forces. But because the one now has a negative, it means that one is going to be subtracted from the other one. Okay. So the resultant vector will again be the sum of the two applied forces. However, after choosing a positive direction, one force will be positive and the other will be negative. So the sign of the resultant force will just depend on which direction you chose as positive. Okay. So let's see. So I told you guys, um, it's always up to you to choose which direction is positive. And you can choose any one of them. Okay to be positive or negative. So let's see, uh, the forces are applied in the same direction, which is um, what we have here. Here's our box, here's you, and here's your friend pulling. So you guys, so you see it's a, it's a head to tail method. So it means that this is the head, this is the tail, this is the So our resultant force is gonna be the force one plus force two, and that's gonna give us 35 Newton to the right, because this is the direction, the positive, we chose right as positive direction. So on this one here, we said forces are applied in opposite direction. Positive direction is the force to the right. So this one is our positive direction, and the force to the left is the negative. We choose which one is our positive. We chose our F2, our direction to the right as positive. So now we're going to say F2 plus F, F1 is equals to F2 minus. This one is going to have, F1 is going to have a minus because it's moving in the opposite direction. So it's going to be 15 minus 20, and that's going to be minus 5 Newton. Or you can say 5 Newton to the left. Okay. You can also say 5 Newton to the left because... Our left is our negative direction, okay? Like I said, if, if you, you don't write your negative, as long as you say to the left, you have showed the direction, okay? So even here, it's minus 5 Newton, but positive direction is to the right. So minus 5 Newton will definitely be to the left side, okay? I hope that you guys are following me. If you're not, guys, please don't hesitate. The aim of this classroom is to understand what we're doing, okay? So if you don't, send me a chat. So now we have something like this. and We're still on addition and subtracting. So these are our force resultant. Remember this one is the resultant force that we got. Remember we said um, our resultant force is a representation of the direction of the individual vectors. So now it means that you can actually write F resultant as 13 Newton, which means that you have already calculated the individual force, even in 
is going to be the five kitchen in that direction. It's also our resultant vector, okay? So there's a special name for vector which has the same magnitude as the resultant vector, but the opposite direction. This is called the equilibrant. So this is a special name for vectors which has the same magnitude as the resultant vector, but in the opposite direction. It's called the equilibrant, right? Because it neutralizes the two vectors, okay? So if you add the resultant vector and the equilibrant vector together, the answer is always A, zero, because the equilibrant cancels the resultant out, okay? So they, they, the equilibrant is basically the one that balances out your um, resultant vector, and that's why it's going to be equals to zero, because it will be at the same magnitude as the resultant vector, but it's going to be only in the opposite direction. So that's the difference between the two. So there we have our little definition for equilibrium. The equilibrium is the vector which has the same magnitude but opposite direction to the resultant vector. So which means that in the end, it's going to be, when you add them together, they're going to be equals to zero. So if you refer to the picture of the heavy box before, the equilibrium forces for the two situations would look like this. So if this is our resultant vector at 35 newtons, our equilibrium must also be 35 newton in the opposite direction. So guys, if you get a question of this nature, where they ask you to draw the equilibrium in the force diagram, or they ask you if the fault resultant is um, 35 newton, able to say that um, it's also 35 newton in the opposite direction, okay? So those are certain things that you guys always need to bear in mind, okay? Because they can ask you anything, especially when it comes to multiple choice. I know that this year you'll be writing only one paper, but it's very important that you know everything and understand everything in every chapter, okay? So there it is. Our F equilibrium will be equal to the minus force of resultant, which will be 35 newtons to the left. So even here, um, we had our resultant force as our left-hand side. So our, our force equilibrium will be 5 newtons to the right. Okay. I hope you guys now understand the difference and between the resultant force and the equilibrium force. Okay. Because they can even ask you in a question, calculate the equilibrium force instead of asking you to calculate the resultant force. And you would know, you would go the very same steps as the resultant force. You will calculate the resultant force. After that, you will just say F equilibrium is equal to the left. Okay. So it's not too complicated, but you just need to understand where, how you apply it. Okay. So now we have a little exercise, which is a draw each of the following vectors to scale and indicate the scale that you guys have used, okay? So this is going to be your homework. But before we do that, I just want to go through. Um, this is going to be your homework, guys. So this is going to be our little test on how to do I just need to check something on our textbook. Okay, guys, I just want to Let's see, I forgot to upload the text, to open the textbook and I'm gonna open it now. I just wanna I just wanna show you guys an example. Uh, 
I forgot to open the textbook on my side. So now I need to go back and try and open it so that I can be able to share it with you guys. This time. Um, so the class is not over yet. I'm I still just going to go back and show you guys some stuff that you guys might need. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry about the time, guys. I know that um, losing it's almost time off, but there's just something that I wanted to show you guys that is very important for me that I'd like you guys to see. So I remember there's somebody that asked. Yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to open. I want to show you guys an example of one problem where we have the vector and how you get to draw it. Because I think um, some of you might still be confused as to how you actually draw these vectors. Okay. Here we have it. I'm just trying to open the textbook. I hope that it will give you guys, at least if I show you guys, one of the um, vectors that are that is drawn so that you guys can see and I can explain to you guys how you guys need to draw it so that you can be able to complete your homework and ultimately you'll be able to do it when it's asked in a test or an exam. Okay. Okay, we're losing time. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I just think that my PC is doing a whole lot of jams today. Okay. The vectors. Okay, guys, I'm still battling with the system to try and get you guys an example. 
of a vector diagram that is drawn to scale. And according to the question, I'll start to do the problem so that you guys can sort of like have a picture of how to draw your vector. Okay. But I'm just having a problem with it. Taking time to open up. And oh, here we have it. It's coming through. 